the Barb. What was he like? A Baha'i blog article written and read by Michael Day. As Baha'is around the world gather on 17 Ramat, according to the Baha'i calendar, they will focus on the Barb's martyrdom in Tabriz in 1850, ponder its spiritual significance, and offer their supplications to the Divine. On that holy day commemorating the horrendous event of his execution, it is also probable that many will wonder what it would have been like to encounter the one who was the prophet forerunner of Baha'u'llah, the founder of the Baha'i faith. Pilgrims have the opportunity to view an image of his likeness in the International Baha'i Archives building on Mount Carmel. For most Baha'is, the only time they'll see it. It is a 19th century portrait in Persian miniature style. There are no photographs of him. When they discuss their impressions afterwards, many tend to say that the painting confirms what contemporaries said about him, that he was serene and handsome. Also in the archives is a display of clothing once worn by the Barb, and that shows his refined taste for beautifully made garments with harmonious colours, elegant but not lavish. From this distance in time we get the idea of a beautifully presented young man. As we seek to develop our understanding of the Barb, we can ponder on accounts by some of those who were blessed to be in his presence during the three decades of his life. So what did his contemporaries make of him? Generations present, and in the future, will always be grateful that the only Westerner to meet the Barb, Dr. William Cormack, 1819-1877, made an effort to describe him. Dr. Cormack said, He was a very mild and delicate looking man, rather small in stature, and very fair for a Persian with a melodious voice which struck me very much. In fact, his whole look and deportment went far to dispose one in his favour. To all inquiries, he merely regarded us with a mild look, chanting in a low, melodious voice, some hymns, I suppose. He only deigned to answer me on my saying that I was not a Muslim, and was willing to know something about his religion, as I might perhaps be inclined to adopt it. He regarded me very intently on my saying this, and replied that he had no doubt of all Europeans coming over to his religion. There is also another description by a Westerner. It is by a British diplomat's wife, Lady Mary Scheel, who didn't meet the Barb but knew Dr. Cormack, so it is likely that her depiction has its origin in what he told her. Lady Mary wrote that the Barb possessed a mild and benignant countenance. His manners were composed and dignified, his eloquence was impressive, and he wrote rapidly and well. The best known description comes from Mullah Hussein, who in Shiraz on 23 May 1844, witnessed the Barb's declaration that he was a divine messenger. Mullah Hussein first described meeting him on a street in the city. The Barb, he said, was a young man of radiant countenance who wore a green turban and who, advancing towards him, greeted him with a smile of loving welcome. Mullah Hussein said, He had a gentle yet compelling manner. As I followed him, his gait, the charm of his voice, the dignity of his bearing, served to enhance my first impressions of this unexpected meeting. They went to the Barb's house where at one point during the evening the Barb asked him a question. The response provides interesting descriptive details. The Barb said, Has your teacher given you any detailed indications as to the distinguishing features of the promised one? Mullah Hussein replied, Yes, he is of a pure lineage, is of illustrious descent, and of the seed of Fatima. As to his age, he's more than twenty and less than thirty. He is endowed with innate knowledge, he is of a medium height, abstains from smoking, and is free from bodily deficiency. After this reply, the Barb paused for a while, and then, with vibrant voice, declared, Behold, all these signs are manifest in me. 
Mullah Hussain remarked on the melody of his voice. I was enthralled by the music of that voice, which rose and fell as he chanted. His reaction conveys a sense of the spiritual power of the Bab. He said, This revelation so suddenly and impetuously thrust upon me came as a thunderbolt, which for a time seemed to have benumbed my faculties. I was blinded by its dazzling splendor and overwhelmed by its crushing force. Excitement, joy, awe and wonder stirred the depths of my soul. Predominant among these emotions was a sense of gladness and strength, which seemed to have transfigured me. How feeble and impotent, how dejected and timid I had felt previously. Then I could neither write nor walk, so tremulous were my hands and feet. To enhance our understanding of the Bab's spiritual power, it is instructive to learn about the effect he had on his jailer when he was incarcerated in a forbidding castle on a mountain above the town of Marku, near the border between Persia and the Ottoman and Russian empires. The chief jailer, Ali Khan, was first very strict on the bar, but one day he had a dream of such spiritual potency that as one who was there described, his self-assertiveness and pride seemed to have entirely vanished. By every means in his power, he determined to atone for his past behaviour. Ali Khan set out within the limits imposed upon him to provide whatever would tend to alleviate the rigour of the captivity of the Bab. And what of the Persian populace? Many met him, yet many did not, so it seems clear that his spiritual power transcended any personal charisma experienced when meeting him. Hundreds of thousands of Persians adopted the faith of the Bab, the most important being Baha'u'llah himself but they also included distinguished scholars, religious leaders, and the famous poet Tahiri, as well as many ordinary citizens. The mysterious and extraordinary effect of this charming, well-presented young man has endured, and it increases beyond his own lifetime, inspiring generation after generation to consecrate themselves to the faith of which he was the herald, and to devote themselves to the challenging task of unifying humanity and a global society of justice and love.